family, it's time for a true look at your world. <laughs> Let's get hooked up for Pack Therapy. Here's your hosts, Tim Donnelly and Graham Hill. Welcome into Pack Therapy, the podcast. Tim Donnelly here along with Graham Hill, getting you set for the Sweet 16. As we're recording this, it is uh, Thursday, so we have uh, 24 hours and change uh, until until NC State and Marquette uh, battle it out with a a Sweet 16 matchup with obviously Elite Eight on the line. A uh, little bit of of you know what's weird? We've had a little bit of time to think. Yeah, that that hasn't happened since the State and, and has, has gone on this run. So I think with some perspective we we get to iron out our ideas a little bit more you did a great job on your show on monday i believe of kind of comparing it to you know when you run the the fitness grand pacer test <laughs> back in high school and like second period you exhort all that energy and then you have to go to math class like yep. the next that's kind of what it feels like we're in that awkward stage of the ncw tournament where it's like game after game after game after game what do we do when there's no game going on? You kind of just get to sit back. And for NC State fans, I just want to encourage you, sit back and just enjoy this moment, enjoy this run that you've been on, and take a breath. It, it's, take it's, your heart rate. It, yeah, exactly. It is very much a um, – um, it, it's it's a tale of two sides, right? I love that Kevin Keats was at the women's game. Yeah. I, I love that he was taking it in and he was supporting the, the – uh, women's basketball team. He was on the Jumbotron. But I also understand that the difference between beating Marquette or it being close against Marquette or uh, you know, having a certain advantage against Marquette and not having those things could be a decision that was made on Tuesday. Right, could be a decision uh, with with Kevin Keats and his assistant coaches in a film room. You know, lights off. Tick, 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 tick. You got the 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 old school projector on, and he's got the laser pointer. It could be something they made like Wednesday night. So it's that that tale of two sides. You need to catch your breath. You need to check your heart rate. You need to make sure everybody's on the same page and, and moving in the right direction. But you also need to make sure. All right, if there's if there's something we can learn here, there's something we can learn. Um, which I think this chess like this chess game and and I've been thinking about it and and I tried to make sure this wasn't a getting caught up in the hype because right now nationally it's DJ Burns season yeah right there's uh there's he's on every show he's on Rich Eisen he's on PMT he's on this show he's on that show they're selling t-shirts he's the the you know everybody's learning about his vending machines and like it's the DJ he can play and, four instruments uh, yeah he can play for exactly you, they tried to get him to play the violin but he's he was too big so he, he plays the upper, with his neck, yeah. so he plays the upright bass like all of these stories are becoming like like myth and lore it's a Paul Bunyan and DJ Burns um I, I do think the main chess piece when you play against a team like Marquette, who, by the way, is a step up from anyone they've played thus far, um, I think he is going to be kind of the fulcrum. He is the pivot point. And here's what I mean. I don't think Marquette has anybody that can match up with him on offense. They don't have the size. They don't have – and even if they have the height, they don't have the the strength, the girth – Right, it, 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 he's he's a difficult person to guard, but also just like we just talked about, right? NC State has time, right? You can watch all of the film. You can you can cut go to cut ups, right? Where you're watching only uh, third, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, second chance opportunities or only transition, right? You can divide up the film and watch everything. And and I think Shaka Smart is gonna have something up his sleeve for for DJ Burns. Why do I think that? Because Shaka Smart is a good coach, and he watched the same games we watched, and he's watched it probably three or four times, and he knows that when State needs a bucket, they go to DJ Burns, and he knows that when the crowd is getting into it, it's because DJ Burns was involved. So I, I, I think there's a bunch of different ways to go with it. I don't know which they'll choose, but my concern is that NC State has to have the counter. It could be something as simple as this. Go small put five shooters on the floor that way you you feel like on defense DJ Burns has to come out on the perimeter and expend energy on defense there's a difference between playing 42 minutes like he played against Oakland um with one foot in the paint at all points in time on defense and playing 42 minutes where you have to run screens and communicate and hedge and do all of these things that he's not comfortable doing I, I'm I'm 
interested to see what Marquette does to try to counteract all of this momentum that DJ has and what Kevin Keats has decided to use as the the counters to those counters. They went small against Oakland when I believe it was Modiar or Ben Middlebrooks, one of the two that fouled out in overtime, and it worked. And you're right, Marquette presents a little more of a challenge than maybe Texas Tech or Oakland has outside of uh, outside of Jack Golke. <laughs> did I get it right this time? You did. I, Finally, let's go. go. Outside of now, now that his 15 minutes are yeah, completely now that his 15 over, 15 minutes and, and we've and completely moved on. From outside that of like repack, a TurboTax commercial and one shining moment, we're probably never going to hear finally, from him. I can finally get Jack Golke's name uh-huh. right. All right, so stop sending me hate mail. But outside of him, they were able to go small. And again, Marquette presents more of a challenge on offense and defense. I mean, Marquette forces 14.7 turnovers per game. NC State's done a great job so far in this tur- of this tournament in protecting the basketball. A lot of their opponents haven't really played too much, you know, pesky defense. Mm. So they've done a good job protecting the basketball. Five of their top six players also average better than one steal per game. I, I don't want to act like we're, we're reinventing the wheel heel. He, wheel heel. I don't want to act like we're reinventing the wheel here. Uh, the way this tournament is designed is for each challenge to be a bigger challenge. Marquette is a two seed. You're playing them in the third round. It should be more difficult than playing a six seed in the first round, right? The Marquette has earned their way here. So you're right. Like pesky defense, guess what? Your perimeter guys are going to have to be safer with the ball in the third round than they were in the first round. Uh, guess what? If you let them crawl back into the game the way you let Oakland in the second round, Marquette has the shooters to and the the slashers to pull away to probably get over the hump. You're going to have to play better. But guess what? The way NC State's playing, Marquette's going to have to play better also. It's And, you know, you go to, to every other game in the Sweet 16. Like, the level of play gets better and better as you go along in this tournament. That's the way it's designed. So, you know, Tyler Kolek, we have to talk about for, for Marquette. If, if, you know, for all of the neon signs that are blinking and pointing arrows at DJ Byrne saying, this is the guy that makes NC State tick, all of those same signs are pointing at, at Kolek for for Marquette, saying this is the guy that makes them tick. He does a little bit of everything. He uh, has a, a a nose for the dramatic. He has a couple, you know, he's he's a six three perimeter player, right? He or six four maybe. I don't I don't know exactly. He looks six three. Um, he he kind of has his version of. DJ Burns spinning over his right shoulder, putting up the left-hand hook, which seems unstoppable. Kolek has this little drive through the paint with his left hand, uh, uses his right hand to push off that's never called, and then he puts it high off the glass, and that's their, like, hey, when we need a bucket, we go to that. So what does NC State have to stop him? That's going to be more difficult than stopping Jack Golke. Jack Golke could shoot. Jack Golke couldn't dribble. Like, Kolek can do a little bit of everything and, and impact the game in a bunch of different ways. It's clear just on the games that I've watched Marquette play that this offense runs through their star point guard, Kolek, who leads the nation in assists per games, and he has only increased his average in the tournament with 11 assists in each game, tie-in Dwayne Wade's team record. Kolek has the perfect <laughs> complement in shooting guard Cam Jones, who leads the team in score and shoots 41% from three-point shooting and has 30 more points four times this season. Those are the two guys that I'm sure Kevin Keats has circled with highlighters, just like my notebook here. It's the Sweet 16, folks. you got to go all in on your research. Of These are the two guys that we cannot allow to get hot because, as you mentioned, Marquette has the complimentary players where if this game gets tight and NC State allows them to get back into the game, they might have a chance at pulling away. I look at it kind of similar. Jones and is is kind of the DJ Horn, who you might even argue is the the you know he's obviously the leading scorer at times has been the best player, but uh, a little bit more traditional. Uh, Kolick is the one who I think is is like oh you really have to game plan for him yeah right Jones is like okay you got a guy averaging whatever eighteen points per game. Well, guess what? You faced R.J. Davis, who averages 21. You faced, um, you know, uh, McCain, who's who's been shooting the lights out. You faced guy like legit perimeter scores. You can use shorthand for that, right? You can go, all right. Here's how we're going to handle Jones, the same way we handled uh, Gerard, or the same way we handled so. Like you can go on and on down the list in the ACC and even to their non-conference schedule, and you can pull there. There's less to less you can do as far as like, oh, we're going to handle him the same way we handled blah, blah, blah uh, for, for Kolek. So that's the guy who I'm like the chess match. 
everything I said about DJ Burns and Kevin Keats, like you have to be prepared for the different ways they're going to try to stop DJ Burns and have your counters ready. The same thing to, to Shaka Smart. You have to be prepared for, you know, Keats and his coaching staff starting on the moment their game ended uh, last week, the moment that overtime ended, they've been thinking about how they're going to attack this this point guard that that is, I mean, he's a triple-double triple, triple double threat, right? I, I'll bring up his stats right here. He's 15 points per game, eight assists, five rebounds, 1.6 steals. I mean, that's a lot of statistical production. So – they're trying to to counter the counter the same way that, that NC State is trying to counter the counter. Uh, the one thing I will say is he's been battling, I believe it's an oblique injury, and oblique injuries are like hamstrings. Uh, what I mean by that is they go quiet. They don't go away. Uh, you might wake up feeling great, and then there's one twist, one move, one fall, and it's right back. So, uh, I'm, I mean – this is just context. I'm not even saying like it's not like oh try to hit him in the oblique. I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I'm not trying to say be dirty or anything. That that'd be ridiculous. But you know maybe you you catch a little bit of a break. You would probably want to beat him at full strength, but you don't give back wins even if their best player gets hurt. Yeah, and you want to be full strength just as your as your team because mm-hmm. because in the tournament the farther you go, the deeper you go. You know health matters, bench matters, production from all caliber players matters. So. Yeah, obviously not saying, you know, single out this injury, but that's just something to look out for if this game, you know, and, starts to go punch for punch, sort of like it did with Oakland. In the same way that, you know, Marquette's going to be aware that DJ Horn missed the first game of the ACC with a hip hip flexor. Yeah. So if if he's wincing. Casey Marcel groin. If, if, if he's wincing and grabbing his hip like going into a timeout, maybe you take your best perimeter defender off of DJ Horn and say, all right, now you're going to go guard O'Connell because he's shooting well or Morcel because he's shooting well and you slide someone else out. It's just, it's a context thing that you have to be aware of rather than anything you're hoping for or, you know, trying to, to impact. Uh, let's take a quick break here, but we have more pack therapy coming up next. Uh, you heard uh, uh, Graham mention it, right? You need big performances from a bunch of different players, right? It's not just the big names when it comes to this point in the tournament. So, We'll talk about the the quote unquote others coming up next. Welcome back, Pack Therapy. Uh, I didn't say this at the beginning of the the show, so please tell a friend about it. Right, this is this is the time where your word of mouth could really help us out. So uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. If everybody tells two friends and they tell two friends, then pretty soon we'll have uh, all the listeners and 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 participants possible. We want all the Pack Nation. Uh, liking and subscribing wherever they listen to podcasts and on our YouTube channel. Um, I went into the break saying we're going to talk about the the others. One of the things I think State has done really well this year, and when I say this year, I mean the last seven games, is embracing the hot hand. Yep. If Modiar is having a day, Modiara has a day, right? If if, if he's going to go for sixteen and sixteen, they find a way to to take advantage of that. There, there might be a day where Ben Middlebrooks wakes up and for some reason he's uh, Nikola Jokic and he's got finesse and he's and he's going up and under and he's hitting all these crafty buckets. If that's the case, they, they've allowed that to, to exist, which is tough. And it's probably a veteran thing and it's a chemistry thing that they're just clicking now. But, you know... I love it when O'Connell hits two threes in the first four minutes, and I'm like, oh, this might be an O'Connell game. Yep. Uh, or Jaden Taylor. Uh, yeah, vice J- versa. Exactly. Jaden Taylor, uh, you know, if he's coming off the bench, comes off the bench and gets like an and one and a long two, I'm like, oh, goodness, this might be a 25 point night for Jaden Taylor. That is not always the case on teams at this point. Um, you know, it's kind of a, I don't know, a, a mix. System of balance, maybe? Well, it's it's like some teams, they know what they are. And and they're just gonna be that, right? If you have a, uh, you know, like a Turquavian Smith, and it's like, guess who's gonna be your leading scorer? Yeah, him. <laughs> like it's and and if somebody else hits six buckets or six points early, Smith's gonna finish with more points than whoever had the six early points. Um, this this kind of run for state, it hasn't been that. It's been all right. What kind of game is this gonna be? And and they've been able to be versatile like that. So uh, who you know. They call it the the blank game, and I think I've used this example in the past, right? Like Kelly Olynyk will hit six threes, and it's like, oh, that's the Kelly Olynyk game. Uh, Mike Miller in the NBA Finals for the Heat hit six threes and lost a shoe, uh, hit a three with one shoe on because it fell off. It's like, oh, that's the Mike Miller game. 
this Marquette opportunity for NC State could be the Jaden Taylor game. It could be the the Michael O'Connell game. You just have to be kind of open-minded to it and embrace it when it happens, and they've done that a few times. Could also continue to be the DJ Burns game. Could be. Well, the Who's thing been is, the centerpiece of all the success. I feel like it's they can build off of that. Don't get me wrong, but like let me let me make sure I get this right here. I want to make sure I, I know exactly which game I'm talking about. So let me bring it up. Um, you're right. So much of it is built off of um, DJ Burns, but. Like against Texas Tech in the first round, he played 16 minutes, right? He had 16 points. Yeah. But, but you know, he had 16 points. Mo Diar scored more points than him. That's not even the game I was talking about. Uh, uh, let me find it. This is going to be frustrating if I can't find it. Which game did did uh, did Ben Middlebrooks go bananas? Texas Tech. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. All right. That's exactly what I brought it up. I just didn't scroll to the, to, to the non-starters because uh, Middlebrooks wasn't in the start. All right. Here we go. Uh, against Texas Tech, which is an NCAA tournament game, and since the NCAA tournament started, everybody is is DJ Burns, DJ Burns, DJ Burns. DJ Burns was the third leading scoring big for NC State. Uh, Middlebrooks had 21. Diara had 17. DJ Burns had 16 in 16 minutes. So you can build everything off of DJ Burns. It could be a DJ Burns game, but I think most of the nation would say that's a DJ Burns game yeah. when it was actually a Middlebrooks game. And if it wasn't a Middlebrooks game, it was actually a Mo Diara game who had 17 and 12. So, so there is like, if you, I guarantee you, if State wins, the headlines the next day will be like, burnt them up, uh, uh, right? It'll be Marquette. Feel the burn. Marquette, you got burnt. Like, all of that will be the 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 wording. But it might be like, oh, DJ Burns was the fourth leading scorer. He's just, he's the face of and he's the, the, the star of. But they embrace and they allow whoever has the hot hand to go ahead and have the hot hand. I'm glad you mentioned Mo Diora because... So far in this tournament, as you mentioned, it could be some. It could be a game where it's a Modiora game. Mm-hmm. He's kind of been my dark horse of this NCAA tournament for NC State. I mean, at times in this tournament, he's played like a guard. And I know that's crazy to say, but he'll be down there, and you kind of see him start to kind of break off towards the perimeter. And Kevin Keats even mentioned when he spoke with Adam Gold earlier this week, if you missed any of that conversation, check it out on the best of the Adam Gold Show podcast or on the fans' YouTube channel, like you're doing with Pack Therapy right now. Thank you for watching. <laughs> He said they had to scale back Modiara a little bit and get him to rebound, score around the basket a little bit more. And then through that, he's rewarded him with the opportunity to shoot the basketball. And for NC State's credit and for Modiara's credit, he shot the basketball pretty well in this NCAA tournament. Here's here's the part that's crazy. And and I you can go back and find this on Pack Therapy. You can find this on the drive on, on previous episodes. I almost know exactly when it happened. Um, Wednesday, sorry. Saturday, February 10th. Saturday, February 10th, Mo Diara decided he's going to shoot threes. Yep. And I and I remember as it happened, he he in the February 10th, he went 2 for 2, and then their next game that was against Wake Forest on the road, their next game against Clemson, he went 3 for 3 from 3. And I vividly remember going, "Where was this?" Right? I I felt like um there's a do you see there's a new bad boys movie coming out bad boys yeah. four uh you are, are you a fan of the the franchise a little bit okay. i'm familiar with it there is a scene when uh marcus played by martin lawrence um drives right and and he drives and he's wheeling and he's and he's fast and he's you know drifting and he's doing all this cool stuff and then at the end after they you know win the shootout or whatever it is mike lowry played by will smith looks at him and goes that's how you drive. From now on, that's how you drive. And then they bring it back in Bad Boys 2 with, now that's how you shoot. From now on, that's how you shoot. And and it's a whole thing. But there was a moment where I felt like I wanted to look at Diara and go, from now on, that's how you shoot. You're telling me you went through all of November, right? You went through uh, all of December, all of January, shooting like, like let's just go through uh, uh, December and January, two threes, zero threes. These are attempts. Zero threes, zero threes, one three, zero, z- one zero, two one 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 zero one zero two. What are we doing there? And then suddenly, again, whatever that was, uh, February tenth, two three 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 four two two. Yeah, let's go to the the postseason. Uh, in the the NCAA tournament, two, three, 
from now on, that's, that's how, how you shoot. shoot. And and it and it opens things up, right? It's sp- it allows you to play alongside DJ Burns because now you're not two guys that need to have both feet in the paint. Yep. You're you're somebody that can space the floor for DJ Burns who you don't want taking threes. So so Diara has leveled up on, on this run, not just I mean it's also important to notice that if you look at, you know, I'll, I'll read his rebounds through the last bunch of games. Uh 13, 12, 14, 12, 16, 14. Like it's important to know he's also doing that, but He's bringing a different element, as you mentioned, kind of from the guard skill set to being a near seven foot rebounding machine. Throws a wrench in the zone defense a little bit that teams might be playing. It also might throw a wrench in defensive assignments. Like, coach, you didn't tell me this guy could space out to the perimeter. Now, obviously, uh, Ike Smart will be a lot mm-hmm. smarter than that. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> they, they, they've had enough time to prepare. So I'll be interested to see. But uh, credit to Modiara. He's really adapted well in this NCAA tournament. He's really adapted into the system. And really just give credit to NC State on offense. I mean, they have gotten better and better and better as this postseason has gone has gone on. I, I also want to give credit to Diara for the, the, the Ramadan thing. Yeah. He's not eating during daylight hours. Or drink is it just I believe it's no drinking also. I'm yeah. I'm not the most culturally uh educated on, on, on that faith, but I believe he can't even rehydrate until the, the sun goes down. Uh and with this being a central time zone He's going to have to go most of the game without it, which, you know, if he hadn't been playing so well while going through Ramadan would make me very nervous for NC State. Uh, and maybe that does mean it's more of a Middlebrooks game early. But um, but it's, it's, it's a credit to him for pulling it off. So uh, the best news is you're in the Sweet 16. You're still playing. You have the opportunity to shock the world. And, and to do that, you're facing a two-seed in Marquette. I just need to ask you. Um, Let's go. Keys to an NC State win. Keys to an NC State win. Um, DJ Burns staying out of foul trouble is, I think, one of the most important. Um, I would say two of the three perimeter shooters – actually, two of the four. I'll go two of the four. Out of Horn, O'Connell, Taylor, Morsell, and I didn't put them in any particular order. Two of those four have to have a, a pretty good day shooting. I mean, I'm not saying you got to go six of seven from three, but, you know th- – three or four of seven at worst. Um, if, if, if they shoot a decent percentage, I think they have a legit shot. And, um, and, and, you know, they Marquette has some players, right? If, if you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do against Colec, you gotta do what you gotta do against, uh, Jones. And, and yeah, that's, that's the, the, the keys for me. Two things I'm looking for. One needs to be the DJ show. DJ Burns and DJ Horn. Obviously, you know you're going to get out of DJ Burns. You've seen what you can get out of DJ Burns. But DJ Horn, I know he had 11 points against Oakland. I can't remember off the top of my head how many he had against Texas Tech. But it just kind of feels like he's had a quiet performance so far in this NCAA tournament run. Now, granted, he hasn't had to carry the workload like you saw him do a lot in the regular season. And that's just a credit to how well NC State's playing. But I'd like to see... NC, or I'd like to see DJ, DJ Horn kind of go toe-for-toe with Kolek at sort of a guard battle. And then for DJ Burns, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Keep feeding the big man. Keep being a dancing bear. Keep having, you know, great moves on your feet, great touch, and just continue to dominate down low. And then the other thing I'm looking for is another defensive performance from Casey Morsell. You talked about it with Casey Morsell on your show this past mm-hmm. week, by the way. If you missed that conversation, yep, check it out Casey on the fans' on. YouTube channel. And you mentioned how he's just a great defensive player as far as getting to on ball, on, on ball defensive play on the opponent's hip, not allowing them to get anywhere close to the basket outside the perimeter. Go watch. There's a clip. You, you if you just Google their two name or uh, you know Twitter search or whatever, whatever social media, their two names: uh, Casey Morsell, R.J. Davis. There's a clip from the ACC championship that actually went viral, and I can't tell you how good your your on ball defense has to be to go viral when it is literally like. RJ Davis is dribbling, he's getting screens. It's it it just looks like a basketball play until you just watch Casey Morsell for the clip and you're like, goodness gracious, you know, it's it's the the white on rice, it's the flies on poo, it's the, you know, whatever the cliche is, you know, guarding somebody as soon as they walk in, in the building. It's unbelievable on ball defense. And every once in a while, you know, I ask Casey what makes him do it. And and he said like well I try to do it every play I don't necessarily believe him I think you can't put in that, put out that energy for an entire basketball game every once in a while you see him decide like all right the guy I'm guarding not only is he not going to get a good shot off 
but they're not going to be able to screen me off of him. Yeah. I'm not going to have to ask for help. I'm just I'm just going to be the more elite player in this matchup on this possession. He he might be tasked with, you know, dealing with some of the the talented perimeter players from Marquette and the more often he can do that without letting his offensive game suffer, will will could be the difference. And because of that, he's blowing up plays early. As far as not allowing opponents to get to the basket and make it, everybody's see, bringing the ball at the court and dictating the offense like, oh, crap, we can't run the offense through Kolek like we were supposed to. Or you'll see other players on the floor get frustrated because they're like, you know, you got to get to the right wing before I can set this back screen, and he's just driving them to the middle of the floor. And yeah. it's like, well, if they don't get – it's like, uh, do I do I set the back screen? Do I – what? Uh, uh, come on, man. And then they pass it, and, and you're right. It's like, all right, then they're all looking to the, the sideline again going – Oh, coach, what do you want to run now? Because that didn't work. If a player is good going to his right, Casey Morsell always <laughs> forces him to his left. It, it, it's and sometimes it's even not even that. Like sometimes it's just, I don't care if you're going right or left. I'm going to be two inches away from you uh, with my active hands. He's he's a really good defender, and he takes pride in it. So uh, again, it could be something that plays a factor. Anything well, else? Did we miss I, anything? I, I think we're good. I think now all we have to do is kick our feet up and watch a game. There you go. And get ready for Pat Therapy on Saturday. Which, by the way, if you are watching this prior to Friday uh, or listening to this prior to Friday, The Drive with Tim Donnelly, our, our afternoon show, uh, will be live from the Cary Carolina Ale House from 3 to 7 on Friday. Uh, so we'll be getting you ready for the state game, leading right up to the state game. Um, so if you want to come out and talk ball, we'd, we'd be happy to uh, happy to hear you. And also, just real quick, as this kind of a housekeeping note, thank you to everybody that's been tuning in during mm-hmm. this NCAA tournament run. We've been having some of our best numbers for obvious reasons. But we still appreciate all Thanks, the insight, DJ. whether you're an NC State diehard Wolfpack fan that's been coming along for the ride with us, whether you're a Carolina or Duke fan that just want to tune in to see <laughs> how dumb we sound. We still appreciate the views and appreciate you adding to the algorithm. But thank you, everybody. As Tim mentioned, make sure to pass this off to somebody. Pass off to two people. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's we'll go be full doing Ponzi scheme with it. We'll be doing a pack therapy from here on out, no matter what happens. And hopefully, if it's an NC State win, let's do a bunch more. Yeah, let's do a bunch more. We'll be back on Saturday for a recap of the Marquette game. Have a great one, everybody.